Okay. Thanks everyone for being here. I am Sarah Feldman and we're gonna get started. Hopefully you're here to learn about how to create a KCS workflow in Slack. We're really excited to have Neil share how he has done it for his organization and we'll hand things off to him in just a minute real quick before we do, in case you don't know. We are the Consortium for Service Innovation. We are a non-for-profit think tank, innovating around customer engagement. Everything we do is made possible because of our amazing member companies. Their dues uh, are our primary funding to actually continue this work and enable us to do awesome events like this, where we get to invite folks like Neil to come share how they have uh, done enabled KCS in their organization uh, so more folks can learn because, you know, knowledge sharing is kind of the name of the game here with KCS. And uh, while you're here, we are recording. We will share the link to this recording out to everyone. We'll actually publish it over on our blog. My Zoom control is in the way. Here we go. I'll just show off our blog real quick. This is where we'll email you a link to because we do a lot of event recordings and recaps posted on our blog. Um, and you can also on our website find more future events. And we have some that we do just for members only. Those tend to be the dark purple images, but lots more things coming up of public events. And we'll share those links in the chat soon for you to register. So hope to see you at another event soon. But before that, let's get started with Neil sharing how he has enabled KCS for his organization in Slack. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you uh, coming and checking things out. Um, we just started our KCS journey. A little bit about uh, who we are as a company and a little bit about myself uh, as some context. Uh, I work for the Academy to Innovate HR. So it's an, a professional development platform that focuses on helping HR professionals to stay up to date and relevant with current skills so that we can better the world of work through online courses, community events, uh, et cetera. Um, I joined the company when we were about eight people. Uh, we're now pushing about 100. Um, so very exciting growth path. It's about uh, five years ago that I joined. Um, when I joined, it was solo support. It was uh, quite an exciting journey. So one of the one of the very first ways I uh, started to scale myself a bit was through self-service and through documentation. And as we we're growing the team, uh, it came about time for uh, me not to be the owner of that or the sole owner of that per se. Um, and that's why we started to turn towards being able to share knowledge in the flow of work and how we're doing things. And that's why we started to look at KCS. Um, I grew the team from 2022 to where it is now at about three support specialists. Um, and we are starting at a bit more junior level. So when we did start doing uh, KCS back at the end of last year, beginning of this year, um, a big portion of the beginning of our KCS journey is actually that initial documentation training in the first place, because we had nobody who had done documentation besides me. Um, and so we're also training a bit the authoring skill uh, as well as starting the KCS journey. And that's why we uh, started doing this KCS workflow a bit um, because one of the reasons normally we wouldn't do approvals uh, in terms of uh, KCS, we'd say knowledge sharing is very important to just to not block and get out there. Um, but for the purpose of training and the purpose of beginning the licensing process, we wanted to do a double check and review in terms of the authoring skill that we're trying to train as well. Um, so that's what I'll show you today. I'm very bad at presenting things, so I thought we could do a little bit more of an interactive walk and talk and just show you how I build it in the first place um, and can ask as many questions in the chat. I'll have it open as well uh, and see how exactly uh, can help and, uh, and what we're doing. Uh, if you have any questions now, happy to, happy to also answer them, but uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen and we can get started with checking it out. Um, I do like the, that somebody else is already using the custom emojis to do the different actions. Uh, we are also using that um, in terms of being able to react for now uh, either that the article is good to go or that there is some additional feedback for uh, the actual authoring skill that we're trying to train. Um, 
starting off in Slack, let me, let me know if you can see my screen. I hope it's uh, hope it's clear and you can see. If the if the dark mode is uh, too much, I also uh, can change that. If uh, I know that people have different preferences. Um, sorry. Looks good from here. Ah, perfect, perfect. <laughs> um, in order to do this, uh, you would need automations uh, in Slack workflow. It's on the, the pro and above plans, so not on the free Slack plan. So if you have free Slack, unfortunately, you can't do this. Um, just to have that as a call out so that you're aware. Um, what we did and what we wanted to do is we wanted to give an opportunity for our reps to share their knowledge to the rest of the team. Uh, the reason why we want to do that in Slack is because our current tech stack, which is Help Scout, which we're using for our shared inboxes and our documentation, uh, is not built for a review process or any sort of draft and, and publishing uh, process. It is, I draft an article, it's unpublished, and I publish it. So we wanted to add in some review process there in between uh, as a step. Uh, and that's where Slack comes in so that we can use Help Scouts uh, to not disturb the flow of work. So when a rep comes, they go to the channel and they can fill out the form with the workflow that we're about to build. Uh, and then it will show the team that, hey, there's a new article, either this is new or existing knowledge. It'll prompt somebody to give it a quick double check and give feedback. Um, we have one of our members who is actually KCS certified uh, now, which is very exciting. She went on that journey uh, to be able to help guide us and lead us in that process and get those uh, those reps up to speed and, and really build the adoption uh, as well, which I think is really important, getting over those initial challenges of the adoption. Um, so let's, uh, let's start building, shall we? Um, in Slack, if you go to the workflow builder, it will pull up the option for you to be able to create uh, new or existing workflows. Um, in terms of creating a new one, we'll just go ahead and start it from scratch. I'll just call it KCS submission. And if my typing is really bad, so don't, don't mind me. I always have to like double check all of my own. <laughs> Typos don't uh, count when you screen share. <laughs> <laughs> of course, all, it's all eyes on, you know, so. <laughs> Uh, what we did in order to set this up is we did, uh, you can choose a bunch of different ways that you want to start the workflow, or a shortcut, a new, new channel, uh, an emoji reaction. Uh, for our case, we did a shortcut. Um, we want this to go into a specific channel where all of these articles would be uh, pumped into, where people would actually be having this, this action oriented. We wanted to keep it out of our main comms channel and make a dedicated space for it. Um, I'll just call this article submission. And we'll go ahead and create that. It will then let you create the different steps for the actual workflow itself. Um, there are a few steps. The very first step for us would be to create a form. And this form, they always do the article title, but they're very redundant in this way because most of them will be the same. Uh, so in this case, it would be submit article. And then we're going to set up our form. Uh, in order for it to be measurable, we wanted to add a couple of things. So the first line of text that we're going to look for, and actually, we would want to change this because the first thing we want to know is, is it new, new knowledge or is it existing knowledge? That way, we can see if the article is being edited and upkept versus is it new knowledge that we're adding to the knowledge base um, and is going out as new. All of our articles right now are currently customer facing, which is why we also want this kind of double check in place. Um, I'll just put this uh, quick, so I'll just put new and existing here. And we'll go ahead and just leave it at that. Um, It'll be a required question because we definitely want to be able to measure it. One of the things that I like to track, uh, at least in the beginning of our process, is the ratio between new and existing. That way we can see if, if there is a high volume or spike of new knowledge that's coming in, what are some of those causes? Is it something that we can take a look at and see um, if there's a better way to solve that or a root cause? If it is that uh, it's always constantly existing knowledge that's being updated, uh, what's changing and why does it always constantly need to be updated rather than that that existing knowledge just working for us 
and not necessarily needing to be adjusted or submitted. So those are some of the things that we're looking for. Uh, we're going to definitely want to look for the name of the article. In general, the name of the article is, uh, for us, just a reference, uh, when it comes into the channel, what is it exactly that we're expecting to go into. And this is just a single line of text. And the last one that we're just going to look for here is uh, what is the link. The reason why we would look for the link of the article is because we're using Help Scout as a tool. Uh, and we need to jump into that tool to review it. It's very easy just to submit it with the link so that whoever is doing that review can uh, click it and just be immediately in that draft to, to see. And then they can leave feedback on that. And that's it. Just a really quick short form, just these three things, nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, and in order to be able to make it a bit more measurable in this sense, we're going to connect it to Google Sheets. Uh, we're using Google Sheets to do the reporting on the back side of it. Um, so in this case, I'm going to add a new row. So when somebody does submit a new submission, it'll just add a new row to the Google Sheet. And here I set up a sheet already for a scrappy but measurable workflow. And we're just going to add it to the submissions tab. That sheet, when you set it up, uh, you would need to set it up ahead of creating the workflow. And it looks like this, where you need to put the fields that you want in the column names in the tab that you'd like to submit it to. And then uh, you can actually use those columns and fields here. So in this column, we're looking for the date, and we're going to insert the submission here. So we're going to look for the time when the workflow started, when they actually started to submit that article. And then we're just going to keep adding the columns to get all of the data that we want to collect. So that would be the date, the submitter, so who is actually the one running the workflow. So the person who started it here. And we're just going to keep adding these down the line. So the type of knowledge that it is. And all of those fields that you made in the form, they actually show up as these variables that you can publish and keep uh, as you go. So here. We're going to look for, is it or existing? And we're just going to keep adding these columns as we go. Keep going down the title. And the last one here, the link. And then the one other thing that we're actually looking for, I think I have all of them here. This is perfect. We'll go ahead and save. And then we, Take the form, person submits the article and they go through, they submit the information so that it can be reviewed, at least for the training purposes at the beginning. We add it to the Google Sheet so that we can collect the data of new knowledge who's submitting all of these articles, especially in the beginning. We want to see if we can find a champion who is doing a lot of documentation and a lot of writing uh, and celebrate that. Uh, of course, I think there's a big difference of measuring activity metrics versus more the outcome oriented metrics. Uh, me and Sarah have talked quite a lot about that in, in, in our conversations before. Um, it's not very good to measure measure success by just the activity. That's really the outcomes there. Um, but at least for the beginning, we want to see adoption. Um, and for the adoption purposes, we are looking a little bit more at the who's doing what in that sense. Um, so once we've collected this data in the Google Sheet, uh, we're actually going to add it here to uh, the channel. So we're going to take what's in the form, we're going to take what's in the Google Sheet, and we're going to send to the channel to let people know. Um, we're going to send this message to our KCS workflow channel. And you can insert all the variables that you want in this. So we're going to say uh, who submitted the article, who clicked the button, uh, as a, yeah, let's just say a new article. And then we're going to put the uh, type, which is like the new knowledge or existing knowledge. And you can pull everything that you had in the form there as well. So is it new or existing? Uh, we can put the title the same way we did with the forms. So you can insert any of these variables that you'd like. And you can make it fun because this is uh, any sort of uh, activity uh, in Slack. You can add all of your custom emojis or anything that you want to do. 
so we can also add some party or anything like that that you want to do. So you can always make it fun and personalized for your, for your team. Um, in that sense, we, we also do really like, uh, like this as well. There are a couple of options that you have here now, um, and I'll show you them, but explain a little bit why we chose to do what we did. If you want to go further with the data that you collect in Google Sheets, you can actually update existing rows uh, in Google Sheets by using this button option uh, because it forces it to go to the next step where you can collect new information. So if you have this button, it'll show uh, here in the bottom, continue. In that sense, uh, it'll take that next step. So if you're not doing an approval process, but you do want somebody to click like a, I double checked it or something like this, um, you could uh, click the continue button and have that just be the option. Um, we decided to go for a emoji reaction option so that we can have different paths essentially because with this continue option, there's only one path, which is just continue on what you're doing. Um, but having custom reactions uh, would be an option to have multiple. So if they need feedback and they need to go do something else, we have a reaction for that. And if it's good to go, then we can have a different reaction for that. Uh, just like Jackie mentioned, she's using custom emojis. In that sense, uh, we can also uh, do different decision-making options here with that. So for now, I'll turn it off. And I'll show you what we did. Uh, and this is it. This is this is essentially the entire flow. So very simple, not uh, not anything too too crazy or complex. Um, and when you publish it, uh, it actually looks like this. So if we go to workflows and we do article submission, we will have newer existing knowledge. Uh, this is just a test. And since we're just doing a test, we'll put a link. When you submit it, it will send the entire information to the channel with all of the information that you put in the form. And immediately in the Google Sheets, everything will go there. And then you can build your reporting off of this. So if you wanted to look at who is the creator and is it new or existing, you could identify someone specific who's doing a lot of new knowledge versus maybe some reps who are only sticking to existing knowledge or updating. You can celebrate those wins in those activities. Uh, and you can also see if there's a big influx or changes based on the date. Um, we kept it simple uh, just to really start because, again, the, the beginning of our journey uh, is really just more focused around getting people trained in authoring and getting people to uh, be able to write that full documentation and gain those skills at a baseline level. As we train these skills and as we uh, move forward with our journey, will actually be getting rid of the approval process for people who are non-licensed or for people who will do a licensing model and are proof to submit without review so that we can get that knowledge out faster without any friction in the process. Um, this is really specifically for training purposes um, and we'll want uh, this more so to be a guide for people to get upskilled in the first place if they've never done documentation before. If we have somebody who's coming in more experienced who has done it, then this would be a little bit less relevant for them. Um, another thing that we are looking for here would be really to share that that knowledge is available for the team to use because our team is all working in the queue at the same time. Um, it's important that, yes, while you can search docs, uh, some of those drafts don't come up in search. So if one of those uh, team members is already working on a draft or already working on a specific piece of knowledge, we would hate for that knowledge to be doubled up uh, by two reps writing a new article for the same topic at the same time. So in this case, then putting it into the Slack channel is a very easy way for us to also say, hey team, you can use this knowledge now, it's out, it's, it's alive. Um, so this is one of the ways that we started the initial core one. Um, there is another workflow, so in order to actually do the approval process for training that we do have at the very beginning to either provide feedback or to just mention to the entire team that it's good to go. What we actually do is we create a, another workflow uh, in this sense. Uh, I'll just call it good to go. Um, and here what we can do is these custom reactions. And these custom reactions will be specifically in our KCS workflow. And for this case, I'll just use a check. And what we're going to do with this is 
fairly simple in terms of just letting the team know that it's good to go. So we're going to put it in the message thread. So whenever somebody reacts to a, a message with this check mark in that channel, it's going to send another message just in the thread of that original one. Uh, and we just want to notify the team that it's, that it's all good. Um, And then we can let the, let the entire team know that, uh, that it is good and ready to go. So in this case, very simple, but the point is to be able to open up different paths for different things that you want it to do um, throughout the, the plan. So if you just want it to be a, hey, I double check this, it's good. Uh, or if you want it to be something that adds another measurement to your Google Sheets uh, or anything like that, you definitely can. Um, so in this case, if I now just hit check, then it will send a message to the channel uh, and let us know, hey, this article is good to go. If you want it to be anything else, um, like what we have set up uh, already now is a feedback flow. So if there is feedback that's needed uh, for the team for training purposes, uh, we actually do it like this where we do a custom reaction. And in this case, it's gonna be the same, same exact channel. And for this one, for example, uh, we'll just use this, uh, this space here, just picking quickly. You can make it fun. Again, uh, we, we set up some custom reactions uh, that have some very fun imaging, uh, try to make it engaging and, uh, and exciting for everybody who's using it. Uh, I think those small things make it uh, bit more engaging and fun. So, um, In this sense, we're going to add another thread. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, here, there's feedback coming for this. There's some feedback. And then uh, the way that we have it set up is we also notify who's going to provide that feedback. Um, so what you can do is you can also insert variables here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the person who reacted um, will provide that feedback. So whoever left the actual reaction will provide feedback on that, just so that they will know who to actually mention and who to go. So of course, I'm the only one uh, in the Slack channel. So it'll always be me providing myself with feedback, which I don't think is very helpful. Reflection is always good, but you never know. Um, Give yourself a high five. <laughs> Sweet, let's go. <laughs> um, <laughs> in this sense, uh, if I react with uh, with this one here, it will also say, hey, there's some feedback, and, and Neil will provide that feedback. And then uh, we actually have it now where we'll go through and we'll leave feedback on the actual article. Um, and then they can resubmit. Um, and what you can do here, for example, is you can include a button and that button could, for example, be uh, recently uh, here. And then that would be up to the person who's going to be uh, resubmitting that article uh, to go through and uh, actually uh, publish it again, rather than needing to make an entire new thing, uh, for example, as well. So then here, there is that button that person can go ahead and move it to the next stage so that they can just continue down the same flow without having to do all of those st steps again. Um, that way, try and make it as easy and simple, try and keep it in the flow of work uh, so that it's not a huge lift. I think at the very beginning, uh, we ran into the very common uh, point of friction where it was, yeah, but writing articles is gonna be much more than what I'm currently doing in the queue. Um, so we tried to mitigate that in a couple of ways. One. Uh, recognize that it is the way we do the queue and not something extra in addition to. Uh, it's definitely a culture that we're trying to drive. And then the other thing was we really want to meet them in their flow of work uh, so that we don't need to go through and do something separate. So we do really want to try and build it in as much as possible, given that our tech stack doesn't necessarily allow for that process to be fully integrated uh, into that that true flow, I would say.
I love the custom custom mascots and, and emojis. The knowledge possum is super super fun. I love that. But we've gone through the flow. This is generally what we what we set it up for. I think the reason why we specifically went in this direction was uh, to go for uh, that specifically in terms of the training exercises and getting people up to that licensed option that we're currently working on developing that uh, the license requirements for, and then everybody will be able to get to that point where they can just go through and, and show. Uh, Dana, I'm gonna read your question. Can you show us how your search existing articles and how the results appear? Uh, can you show us the workflow and updating existing articles? Is it copy paste to the URL? You indicated earlier how many users are using the solution. Definitely. Um, in terms of searching for existing articles, uh, Help Scout does have within their uh, inbox flow because we have docs and our shared inboxes both in the same tool. For existing articles, team members can actually just use a slash command. So if they were in Help Scout here, for example, they would just put slash uh, doc and then be able to search for a doc in their actual flow of work. Um, so in that case, that part is integrated into the exact same uh, flow and system, which is great. Um, that way they can use existing knowledge quite easily and be able to search that. Uh, in terms of updating it, everybody has access to update and edit docs uh, in that flow as well. So luckily enough with Help Scout docs and our shared inbox is all together and that part is integrated for existing knowledge uh, there. But for existing knowledge, they would only submit it in this workflow if they've adjusted it. Um, so when they do actually edit and upkeep that knowledge, uh, that's where we actually want them to go through and submit it just so that everybody is aware of the changes. Because if somebody is very used to using the same article or something, of course, it should be up to date. But in case a different rep changes something, we do want that team to be aware uh, of that. but it would be the same exact workflow. There are a lot of complex things that you can do with Slack and Slack automations as well. Um, you don't just need to use Google Sheets if you're using Airtable or using any other kind of tool like that. They do integrate and have a, a large library of applications. Also, for example, Notion or, or any of these tools that you might already use. Who's reviewing articles? Great question. Um, currently, when we very, very first started out, uh, since I was the only person on the team who had uh, data, the actual documentation experience within our product, um, because we have very specific style guiding with our marketing style guide and language that we need to use in terms of grammar and everything, uh, I started out doing it. But uh, we do have our senior support specialist, her name is Sway. And she actually got KCS certified uh, and is actually starting to build out that internal style guide for our articles and the criteria. So she's actually taking that on as well. We started co-reviewing uh, at the very beginning just to go through the training of how she should be providing feedback on articles and things like this, just to really build the muscle. But currently she actually is doing that all herself and taking ownership of that, so that's great. That would be our senior support specialist. Um, and thank you, Sarah, for sharing that uh, training because it's great. I think uh, it definitely brought a, a different, different perspective and level uh, from just trying to figure it out from the from the articles and, and the information that's provided. But in general, we we train someone to do it first, and then we start to build the team up to to meet them there. But uh, we are trying to have a dedicated owner for the program. Uh, that way we can make sure that there is uh, clear ownership and responsibility for that. How are things going in terms of uh, your team feeling like this is part of the way they do their job now versus something in addition to? You mentioned that was a concern they had, very, very common. Well, I think it's almost no one avoids that. <laughs> so uh, I'm... Have they come around? Are they seeing the benefit of participating in this? Yeah, um, definitely. I think one of the biggest things is to show why it's so important and the benefit that it has and really trying to relate the outcomes back to the team in terms of their activities. Like, What does this actual activity mean in the long term? 
one of the other big questions that was raised was what is this like this will slow down our handle time it will slow down our metrics or affect our current metrics and uh, i think that just the big flat answer to that was uh yes definitely uh but it will be the new way of working and we'll need to benchmark the new normal based on this because the knowledge is so valuable that 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 efficiency change uh, is much more valuable because eventually it will uh, offer a better self-service experience to our members where they can actually access that information themselves and they don't need to come to us per se. Um, the team is doing very well with it. Uh, I would say that in this sense, we did make it a part of our OKRs and our quarterly uh, goal setting. And we've also created many uh, objectives around it in terms of the improvements that we make, uh, our traffic to our, our self-service materials, uh, and some of the other different types of volumes. And the team themselves is definitely ingrained and, and adopted it well. So now, since we have such a small team, it's also very, I would say, a lot easier to make sure that everybody is on board and good and make sure it's a positive experience, uh, where I could imagine a very, very large organization or team having a little bit more difficulty with it. Um, we're a very close knit team and we do we do work quite well. Um, there's also a question from Dana, is the new KCS program manager also responsible for managing compliance? Um, my question would be a little bit to clarify compliance in that sense, um, in terms of making sure that we're doing docs audits and everything uh, later on down the road and, and on a regular Charles, period? Please. Or... I'm sorry? I might have been a mic slip from someone. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Um, but yeah, I, I would just say maybe what the question is around compliance, if it's specific about the information that's included in docs, because um, I would say that our new program manager is indeed responsible for making sure that all of our information is uh, standardized, is good, and is up to uh, the requirements that it needs to have. So if that's what you mean by compliance, then definitely. I think maybe I uh, I went through the the workflow a little bit too quick because we're we're doing quite well on time. So yeah, that was <laughs> first. Can I just say I'm impressed you did all that live. The the demo curse apparently is not active today. So everyone else out there, like today's the day to, to demo things. Maybe <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another but, question from Dana: If you solve a customer issue but it doesn't have an article tag, then it's a compliance problem. Uh, is what I'm getting at. Oh, yeah. Um, definitely, definitely, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, our our knowledge manager is responsible for that, um, and she is uh working on making sure that we have a full process in place for that. Um, we will have regular cadences uh, for checking it and doing review. It will also be built into our quality uh assurance and and conversation reviews that we'll have as part of our quality program having an article included, uh, if relevant, of course, we're not gonna force people with articles that are not relevant. Um, if it's relevant, then, then it definitely should have it. Um, Maring is asking if uh, it's available with paid version of Slack. It is only with the paid version of Slack because that's where they offer the actual workflows uh, that you can use for automation. How has your leadership uh, been involved as you guys have ramped up? I understand that you started kind of in a scrappy way because you, you wanted to sort of prove the value of this first. You didn't necessarily have a lot of additional yep. budget. Um, so how how are they seeing this so far? Yeah, so so we're still in the in the no tools uh, phase, I would say. Um, in that sense, we are really trying to flush it out and make sure that we get a robust library of knowledge and that we are showing the, the results of it. So since this is the first quarter that it's in full swing, uh, we just started uh, the rest of our first initial skills trainings uh, in Q1. And then now we're starting to move more into the uh, full swing, I would say, what it is. So we're still about in the same place. Um, there's two aspects of what we're doing. One, I would say, is the full KCS in the flow of work. 
Um, and then the second part of it would be our product documentation that we're really trying to make more robust uh, as well. So um, we're going to be doing the product documentation training a bit uh, throughout this journey so that we get the full, full rounded skill base. There are a couple of other questions. What are some of the enhancements that you're looking uh, or considering to do? I don't think it's 100% uh, perfect, David. We definitely started, uh, I would say, at the, the very bare uh, bare minimum uh, in simplicity, just to make uh, make sure that we could get live and, and get going. Um, one other enhancement that I would really like to do would be taking a look at, because we're doing a review process, taking a look at, is it stalling uh, our reps from being able to actually finalize those tickets? Um, and being able to finalize that because the docs haven't been reviewed. So one thing that I do want to look at would be updating that Google Sheet row with the time that the reviewer actually finished the review. Um, that way we can see the time between submission and review just to make sure that it's as, as short as possible. Uh, and we can make sure that they're not getting blocked by this process. Um, ideally, they get licensed and this process goes away entirely. But that I would say would be the goal. <laughs> Um, but yeah, well, I, I definitely think there are a lot of improvements uh, and other flows that we can build off of it for sure. But getting that uh, that time to review down as much as possible to unblock people would be priority number one. Oh, definitely, definitely, Lynn, go go to sleep. <laughs> it's about thirty a.m. for sure. Uh, but definitely. But yeah, th those would be the, the simplest workflows. I think one other interesting thing uh, would be that because we're doing just customer facing knowledge now, um, we will also start focusing on internal knowledge. And I do think that some improvements to this workflow into, I would say the channel, not just the workflow, uh, would be to capture internal knowledge from other channels based on a reaction uh, that we'll use. So where it pumps in a suggestion for internal documentation based on maybe an FAQ in the sales channel or some other type of information that's happening from our product team. Um, being able to say, hey, that's interesting for knowledge. Let's let's capture it. Let's do it. Um, that's definitely something that I would say is a nice uh, enhancement or improvement to this as well. So that we're not just, hey, here's customer facing knowledge in, but also internal knowledge uh, that we're collecting to build as well. I know it's still early days, but have you been able to measure any um, improved member success with self-service since you've started this? Yeah, um, I would definitely say so. Um, in April, we actually had our lowest volume month uh, as ever, <laughs> I would say, for, for at least the past year. Um, the other portion of that is we are focusing right now on really getting our views uh, up. So what we're looking at is our uh, actual usage rates of our uh, information and documentation. So in terms of our doc, our help center itself, we're really focused on getting the average weekly views up um, in terms of people using it. And there we have seen quite a bit of improvement. Uh, in general, I would say yeah, not to give a percentage off the top of my head because I don't want to give uh, random information. Um, we were really focusing on going from uh, 50 to 70 views a week. Uh, considering our current base, it was a more realistic target. Uh, and we also don't have in-product support yet, which is definitely something that is going to be coming for us. Uh, it is something outside that they would really need to search for. So for us, it's a big win to get the usage up in general. Um, our knowledge management system currently went from, uh, we have a few different ones. We went from HubSpot uh, docs to Help Scout docs. The reason why we made this shift from uh, HubSpot self-service to Help Scout was because that Help Scout was integrated directly into the teams in the first place where they didn't have permissions to create articles in HubSpot or any of that information. And we were using Help Scout already. We moved over to Help Scout so that we could have docs in the flow of work, uh, which was definitely a big one. We want to make sure that they don't need to leave their environment to get, get access to docs and get the information that they need. Um, that's precisely why we made the move in the first place. The knowledge management system there was 
uh, directly integrated. Um, and we've been using Job Scout now for since 2021, uh, so a few years now. Uh, never using the same same flows or shared inboxes. So not not a separate tool. I noticed that you guys, you, you've mentioned publicly that you guys are hiring. Are you hiring on, onto your support team? Yep, we're hiring uh, directly onto our support team. We have a customer support team lead uh, and a specialist uh, that are going to be open. And uh, we're excited to grow the team and continue the journey. Nice. And so with that, have you altered the job descriptions or the, the type of folks that you're looking to hire now that you're uh, practicing KCS? Is it changing your outlook of what you're looking for? Uh, I would say that somebody familiar with knowledge work uh, is definitely a huge, huge win for our team leads. Um, however, we are giving that responsibility still to our senior rep Way, so they don't necessarily need it because Way is the owner. Um, but it is definitely something that we're looking for in terms of being able to leverage knowledge um, and resources in that aspect. Uh, too, but I can't say that it's been a direct uh, driver from KCS, uh, but being able to have our self-service solutions and uh, strategy in place is definitely for a team lead. Uh, for a specialist, we have the training method in place, so we're excited uh, for anybody who's looking to join. Nice. And have you started to think ahead about how you might evolve your team as you mature through KCS? Uh, do you already have some folks interested in uh, KDA work, or is that something you're gonna wait and see? Give it a give it a few. <laughs> <months. laughs> we'll we'll give it a we'll give it a bit there. I think um, documentation itself, uh, I personally love, <laughs> but uh, and I nerd out about a lot. But I don't mm -hmm. think that everybody has that same passion per se <laughs> on the existing team. I, I hope that we can find somebody who does love documentation uh, as much as all of us. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, as we, as we grow, we'll definitely have, uh, I would say the biggest first step for us is having a dedicated knowledge uh, program manager um, to where we do have full ownership responsibility for somebody to really drive the success there rather than it being a dispersed uh, effort. Yeah, you're, really, you're crowdsourcing your KCS program setup at this point, right? At the moment, so uh, so definitely uh, definitely looking forward to having that full, full ownership. Of course, that, that uh, does come down to me. Um, but having somebody to really be dedicated to it uh, full time, obviously, with their responsibilities is definitely something that we're looking for. Amazing. Well, it's pretty, pretty cool to see what you've set up so far, uh, even without those dedicated resources, just with your current tech stack. And that was an awesome demo. Thank you so much, Neil. I don't know. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It looks like the questions have died down a little bit. I will, before we have too many people drop off here, whoops, I just copied and pasted the same link again. Let me try again <laughs> what I was trying to link. Something else was on my clipboard. Was our events page. So I showed this really quickly at the beginning. Please check out our events page and register for any new events coming up. Neil, as folks go play with this, which I expect they will, because that was really fun to watch. Uh, can they reach out to you with any follow-up questions? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, I'm yeah. happy to, any connections. I'm in uh, Write the Docs, I'm in Support Driven, uh, Elevate CX, and also on LinkedIn. So any, any way you want to reach out is totally fine. Awesome. And we'll share those links when we email everything out to folks. And speaking of going to bed, it's uh, almost <laughs> at the end of your day where you are, right? So indeed, indeed. So I will. Uh, I'll leave it with that. And thank you so much for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. I hope that some people can find some creative solutions to problems they're having. So best of luck. Thank you so much, Neil. Thanks everyone for being here. We'll see you soon. <laughs>